on his side as it finishes then. Denmark 2, France 0. Oh, what a great time to have the French contingent <laughs> on. Frank Leboeuf and Julien Laurent with us. Jules, what went wrong? Well, a lot of things, especially in that first half, Dan, especially between the, the 15th minute, because actually the start of the game was, was pretty good. And Mbappe had a chance. Uh, Griezmann had the chance as well, who was captain for the first time in his international career. And then after the, after the first uh, uh, quarter of an hour, then they stopped playing and they, were, they could not get out of their own half. The pressure and the press from Denmark, to be fair, worked well. But it was really, really poor from France. Lazy, like the defending from Upanikano on the first goal. Lazy on set pieces where they kept being under pressure. They could not really read. What, I mean, it was pretty simple that they were blocking Chouameni uh, for Delaney. And every time he had a free header, like we saw on the second goal again. But even before that, they could have scored Denmark on, a, on, on set pieces. And then there was just nothing between the 15th minute and the 45th minute for France. It was ridiculous. I don't think that Deschamps' choices, especially defensively, helped. I think starting with Saliba, Upamecano and Badiashil, who, I mean, between all of them, I think this is 11 caps. And 21, 23 and 21 years of age was, was not the right call against a team like that at home with a lot of momentum, with a lot of really good players. This, this Denmark team is really, really good. And I think that first half showed the limits of Deschamps tonight and of the national team as well. Lazy? Is that a good word to sum it up, Frank? I, I can understand what Julian, Julian means, but I, I, I would say that the word exper inexperienced uh, really means when you see the team. Uh, yeah, they've been lazy because I think they were lost. They played well for like 20, 25 minutes, as Gilles explained, and then after they lost the momentum and their mojo, and uh, the, the Danes were... They show more experience, more more initiatives, and more creation in their in their in their in their actions. And uh, and France didn't exist at all. But when you start with uh, three players like uh, like Saliba, Upamecano, and Badiashile, but sorry, you you of course you face in an experience, and uh, and you're gonna have you're gonna have issues. And it's what it's what really happened to the French na national team. I'm not trying to find any excuses. Especially because next two days I will be in Copenhagen in Denmark for three days. So I'm going to be teased by all Danes. <laughs> but uh, we'll have to face the reality of it. The French national team that we see now is not the, the champion of the world team. And is not going to be hopefully the team we're going to see during the World Cup. Because you have, uh, again, I repeat that, 15 injured players from the team who normally is going to go uh, to, to the World Cup. What are you doing in Copenhagen? Marvels? <laughs> Uh, no, no, no. Uh, the, there is a FIFA event, and uh, I've got to have to, to spend three days in Denmark, in Copenhagen. I'm going to see the Little Mermaids, and I will uh, kiss her from you. Oh, well, thank you very much for that. <laughs> uh, back to the injuries, Jules. How much is that an excuse for this performance? I mean, I don't think excuse is the right word, but it's, 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 it's a fact, really, that tonight, like Frank said, it's probably France's C team, maybe D team. For, for most of it, really, of course, there's Mbappe and Griezmann, for example, who will start at the World Cup and Chouameni probably. But for the rest, none of the others who started tonight are certain to start the first game against Australia in, in Doha. So, of course, it's a, it's a fact. I think Deschamps had to do, you know, to, to do with what he had, which, of course, you don't have Benzema or Pogba or Conte or Kimpembe or Lloris, and, and the list goes on and on and on. But yet, this is still the French national team with a lot of depth, with a lot of talent that could have dealt with that moment of pressure of that 20, 25, 30 minutes in that first half better. Even if they're young, even if for a lot of them this is all new, this is the first, second, third cap, fourth cap. OK, I get that. But still, you expect it better from them. So it, they will learn. They will learn from it. The most important, I think, for Deschamps tonight was not to be relegated. That's all he cared mm. about. There was nothing really else to play for. So he'd be happy by the fact that Austria lost to Croatia, that we're still in, in, in the top division in the Nations League, and that you can already forget about tonight almost. And I think, think about the World Cup and have your fingers crossed that all the injured players come back in really good fitness and good shape for the World Cup. What's happened to Umecano, Frank? Obviously fantastic at Leipzig, hasn't exactly established himself as a first-choice defender at Bayern. We saw that mistake today. I understand he's young, but there was so much excitement around him, wasn't there, when he was at Leipzig and they went on that Champions League run. He doesn't seem to have kind of kicked on from there. 
Well, there are teams who are, and clubs who are like kind of family, and uh, that's what happens in Leipzig, where you feel you're at home and, uh, and, uh, and you feel secure and comfortable in a way, and you can express yourself. When then you reach Bayern Munich, and if you're lucky, the, the French national team, but th there, there is not family. There it's competition, it's results, it's uh, the best of the best, and you have to be uh, ready for that and up for that every uh, week, uh, weekend and uh, even in the middle of the week. So it's what happens to him. I think he has to settle down. He has to get a little bit more, a little, a bit more of uh, uh, experience, and uh, and uh, he's gonna go there because uh, he's gonna get there because he's he's talented. But he needs sometimes to uh, to settle again, and uh, it can happen to many players. You know, we saw Saliba struggling for two years when he was in Arsenal. Uh, mm -hmm. Last year with Marseille, he finally uh, finally found himself. And it's going to happen the same, hopefully, to uh, Upamecano. And it can happen to any players that they need, like, a year. Uh, hopefully not to, uh, to, uh, to um, understand how it works and, uh, and settle uh, better down. Is that fair, Yanis? Yeah, I think so. And, uh, and who knows, maybe the absence of Luca uh, Hernandez is important, uh, both for club and country, right? I mean, we, ultimately, we don't know what Didier Deschamps will do, but I think it does happen. I, I, I look at Upamecano, I remember uh, Ibrahima Konate, two youngsters who struggled at Leipzig, by the way, with injuries and, and, and with playing sometimes. And, and Konate took him a while to, to kind of get used to Liverpool, right? Then yeah. he did, and injuries again. So these are very, very young players still. So uh, it takes time sometimes. Uh, of course, as we mentioned, no Paul Pogba Dan, for this. I'm sorry, I'm sorry to cut you off, Dan, but Dan, you, you have the example of Nkunku being in Paris Saint-Germain and struggling when he was playing there, mm -hmm. not try, not finding his his uh, his, uh, his rhythm, and and going to uh, to to Leipzig and finally find that family club and expressing himself the best way. The question mark for for him for him for uh, Nkunku is how he's going to behave when he's going to reach the the best of the best in terms of clubs and. Uh, and maybe have a, a room in the, with the national team as well. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.